Winspiration, the way to the essential. On UK Health Radio, Winspiration brings wisdom and information for an extraordinary future. Together, we can shape the world we want to live in. So let's get real and create the idea. Be extraordinary. Welcome to the Inspiration episode today about yeah, what could be the future model of the society be. And uh, I feel really blessed uh, having here for this first show to this topic, Ben Bartlett uh, from California here on the show. And uh, he wrote a book about capitalism and we will talk about capitalism today. Um, yeah, a lot of people say, wow, that's an evil thing. And uh, maybe uh, capitalism is something like a knife. You can do good with it or bad with it. We will find out. Um, so be aware, listen, very interesting. And welcome, Blaine. Thank you um, for being part of this and sharing your wisdom and experience with it. You're today... Um, was a consultant in international leadership um, consciousness for um, leaders and companies or entrepreneurs and teaching even how capitalism should be in the future. You wrote a book, uh, Compassionate Capitalism, and it's even a heart for the world on it uh, and the dollar, this combination. And when I listen to politics and everything, that seems not possible, uh, what they say. Um, so really curious um, to pick your brain today. And uh, I know you were not always the super uh, say capitalist advocate. Um, so if you please share a little bit where you come from and why you do today what you do today. <laughs> well, Wolfgang, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Where did I come from? Um, <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll just start by saying I grew up on a farm uh, in the state of Oregon uh, here in the United States. And I mention that because um, part of my life's journey uh, is informed by my relationship with nature. Um, I would go for walks. I would go for, I mean, I'd, I'd work in the fields. Uh, and when you stop and really look at how nature is organized, it is truly the only free market system that you will find. Mm -hmm. There are no constraints mm -hmm. in nature. And what's interesting about the way nature works, and I'll answer this question in terms of, the, you know, why, you know, what was I before I became an advocate for compassionate capitalism? Nature works on the premise that everything, first, first of all, it works on a premise of abundance. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, it's an abundant universe. Everything is energy. It's always moving. And everything in nature ultimately becomes a center of distribution, not a center of accumulation. Yeah. And that is a that is a very fundamental distinction that needs to be recognized because capitalism, as most people experience it, is organized around being a center of accumulation. Yeah. Um, and, and that's toxic. It's very toxic. So yeah. before I actually became kind of an advocate of what I call compassionate capitalism, um, yeah. Yeah, my educational background uh, was in marketing. Uh, my educational background was international business. I went to school in Europe uh, as well as here in the U.S. And I started noticing, you know, just kind of how businesses worked. And mm. uh, and I was part of the yeah you know, part of the machine. Yeah, you know, I you know, went to work uh, and, and did marketing work and that kind of stuff. But I began to notice that. It wasn't particularly a healthy place to live. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, if and I mean, I mean that most. My experience is that most workplaces, most uh, work environments, tended to be toxic to the human spirit. Yeah, yeah. People would come in and uh, come to work, and uh, they would. I mean, this is a broad generality, but they would wait around being told what to do. And then they would be resentful because somebody was telling them what to do. You do. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
uh, and it's then they go home involved. and they would yeah, wait yeah. for somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you go home and you know, you're autonomous, you're doing what you want to do, you're, you have agency, you're moving around freely, but you come mm-hmm. to work and all of a sudden the constraint of the system said, you are supposed to be here, you are supposed to do that, don't tell me what you think, just do what I tell you. Yes. And, and now that's, again, broad generalities, but it was toxic to that human spirit, which is where creativity uh, exists, where uh, innovation exists. And it's not an accident that entrepreneurs um, tend to be very creative and entrepreneurs don't like being part of a big system. Yeah. Uh, they 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 want to go out and they want to do things. Yeah, so said, that... So that's it said... They're like you need to do this and this. It's like when we, we say, if you're is it in English, the right term, if you're normed, or someone says this is a norm, that is yeah, not norm. natural. Even if everybody is doing it, it doesn't need to be natural. And right. you want to be creative and see see the world. You need to use your brain and not uh, <laughs> use synapses. Yeah. That's the whole thing possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, where where I ended up actually landing uh, essentially was just through questioning, what's the purpose of business? You know, why Mm -hmm. do people do what they do? Why do they organize businesses, create businesses? And if you go back to Milton Friedman in the 1950s, uh, Nobel laureate in economics, yeah, he famously said that the purpose of business was to make a profit. Well, that seemed to be pretty short sighted to me. And Mm -hmm. uh, so I started really examining. You know, what do successful businesses actually produce? Well, what they produce is not a product. What they produce is not a service. What they produce is a possibility in people's minds that I can be better if I consume this product or service. So what they're selling, highly successful organizations, sell the possibility of thriving. Mm -hmm. The purpose of business is to make possible an enhanced way of thriving on the planet, not just surviving. And if I feel like I can thrive, yeah. um, I'm going to probably want to buy your product or service. So you will yeah, make money. Yeah. But the and purpose they, is the here we have the also possibility of thriving. So we have the two topics. What is a business? And the other thing is because we say it's thriving, what is the human all about? What makes us different to animals? So it's not just about survival. It is about Thriving, getting a totally different conscious level. So um, in in my book, the best is yet to come, I said, companies are there to solve problems for the people. And in the moment, we live totally opposite. And uh, um, and you go even a different way. It's not only about solving problems. No, it's even the next step that they are capable to thrive, to really develop and go (laughs) <laughs> to a better extraordinary future. Yeah, and and, and this is where you know, health and well-being yeah become really important. Yeah. and I know that that's part of the focus of this uh, this platform is is health. Yeah, and yeah. I don't mean just physical health, emotional health, spiritual health. Um, when businesses take responsibility for the whole, and what by that I mean literally, my business activity touches everything. Uh, I mean, there are microplastics in the bottom of the Mariana Trench, the deepest place in the world. There are nanoparticles in rain falling you know, all over the planet. You, you cannot escape the consequences of businesses' activities. And businesses, for the most part, and this is where we've, I think we've got very, very bad uh, uh, counsel uh, when we started looking at profit as being the, the, the uh, metric for success. Mm-hmm. Profitability is a short-term focus. When I'm looking at enhancing the possibility to thrive on the planet and taking responsibility for ensuring that, I start looking at consequential. uh, Mm -hmm. uh, 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 What's the consequences of my action? uh, Short-term, mid-term, and long-term. And by designing my product, by designing my service so that there is no unintended consequence that is compromising the health and well-being of not just my customers, not just my family, but the environment, 
the yes. globe, you know, those sorts of things, which forces us to make hard decisions about how we go to market, how we actually produce things. And those hard decisions need to be made. Yeah. Compassion, capitalism as it runs, as it is actually executed today by most, and I mean literally by most companies, is with a short term immediate re yeah, return on, uh, on, on market, investment. One, every uh, three months, new numbers. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And it's focused on accumulation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how yeah. can I get, get what I want now? Um, and we'll, we'll cut costs. We'll go to market in an inefficient manner because it costs less to do that. But the, the long-term cost, you know, we look around and we've got acid rain, we've got the acidification of the ocean. Uh, you know, most cancers are environmentally uh, caused. Um, there, you, know, you can trace all of you know, the health and well-being of the human species, not not alone you know, the yeah. extinction of species on the planet. I mean, yeah, you know, there's there's 50 percent less birds on the planet today than there were you know, 40 years ago. Um, direct cause of that is environmental pollution. And the consequence of that is the way businesses are conducted. Yeah, the most polluting, you talk now about you just yeah. the point of uh, making profit and what you said in the short term. And the I think here is another point that um, if I look at the banking system or these uh, credit loan system, teaching the people the same thing, get out of this natural short term, short term, short term. So they are addicted now, right? like, like drug addicts. If you take them the loan away, the credit away, they don't know it. So it's not just companies. It's really it, this, like we said, the cancer the system is spreading. <laughs> yes. It's spreading. The yeah. entire economy of the world is based on consumption. Yeah. And when consumption stops or, re, or starts to go down, mm -hmm. uh, every it goes crazy. It's kind of, oh my God, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. We have to, yeah, yeah, keep growing, keep growing, growing at any cost. Growth at any cost is called cancer. Yes. <laughs> when you when you look at that in the human body, when yes. cells start dividing and growing you know, uncontrollably, it, yeah. it's it's a it's a cancer. Yeah, but and it's it the fascinating system. in the first moment. Wow, how fast can the cancer grow? Look at these cells, how fast they grow. But in the end, they always kill the host. Eh? So it's just uh, yeah. So we don't get it. But interesting question is consumption. Is it really consumption, or is this a consumption of the wrong things? Like in the past, I, I just simply say we created wealth because of war and sickness. Or like we said, it doesn't matter what they consume. We they consume things that doesn't help them. It makes them think. What if just we, 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 we need to believe in it because we I think don't see the possibilities that we can say, oh, we have it already, that if we can see the numbers for that. What if we focus on peace and health? So turn it everything under the would we then could accept growth? Mm -hmm. That I think that I mean you reframe what consumption is about in the way that you're talking about it. Are we consuming health and well-being? Are we mm -hmm. consuming peace mm -hmm. as opposed to consuming fear? Yeah. When we, when we look at the political environment today, um, fear is one of the most base of human emotions. And it's also the easiest emotion for manipulators to access. Mm -hmm. Political parties do this all of the time. You know, the rise of nationalism. Yeah. They are, you know, the immigrants, they are coming in to threaten us. Yeah, yeah. That's a fear-based conversation that creates an opportunity for consuming the political ideology of whoever it is. It's, you know, mongering the fear. And we have to become, I think, very aware as a populace about what's going on in our environments. And I don't mean physical environments as much as emotional, intellectual and spiritual environments, you know, just, you know, what is going on? What are, what are we being fed? What are we consuming? And anybody that you know, postulates fear 
and says, it's us against them. They are going to take what we have. Those sorts of things uh, are, they, they are unbelievably dangerous you yes. know, to the human oh. system. We look, look at it in nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, nature doesn't, li- it doesn't organize around fear. Nature organizes, I mean, it, and that's not to say that bad things, quote, unquote, bad things, that stuff doesn't happen. I mean, a tiger will eat a gazelle, uh, or not a gazelle, a lion will eat a gazelle yeah, well, we, on the African plain. We do the same thing. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there, there are appropriate places where fear is conducive to <laughs> health and well-being, but not a pandemic of fear. Not a pandemic and, of fear. And the difference between fear and danger Fear it normally Very is different yeah, because we we feel we yeah. have the emotion um, and then we believe we are the emotion. But it's a normal thing that the life ends with death. So why shouldn't I yeah. feel it? I should like a fear doesn't take the death away; it takes the life away. <laughs> yeah. So what yeah. can we do there? But you know, history is um, is focusing, like you said, also. In another talk, um, we are not connected to whatever consciousness is. If we only see the 3D world, okay, you have more water, you have more cows or whatever. I I need to steal to take away. Yeah. yeah? And yeah. Uh, can you go with this also in this context? Uh, because I got the one someone told me, I didn't really check it. Because we have CEOs for everything, the officers uh, in the companies. Mm-hmm. Let's go 2,000 years back when the first bigger organization, business organization started. There were no business schools. Nobody knew how to do it. So the only yeah. people who knew how to run a bigger organization were the officers. So they got to the military and took the people there. Can you run the show? And that's why they called them. We are the officer for that. And so that's why we're totally still in this, I need to get more market shares, I need to fight and have this. And yep. you're still in this competing old, let's say, officer thinking, war thinking. It's true. Yeah. I mean, most organizations are, are put together. They're organized on a hierarchical structure, which m- mirrors a military model. Yeah. And... And you know, you, you'll hear this in boardrooms. I mean, I've, I've lived my adult life in boardrooms yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah, it's a war out there. You've got to capture market share. There's a competitor mm-hmm. that needs to be trounced. Yes, you know, all of those sort of things. And competition, competition by itself isn't inherently bad. And I want to be very clear about that. Yes. Yeah, competition is a great way to hone my skills to up level my my. Yeah. Uh, way of engaging the world yes what's the problem with competition in the way that it's actually constructed or actually executed in the the world today is it's predicated on a uh, paradigm or a consciousness of scarcity yeah it's yeah it's it's rooted in a in a notion that says it's a scarce world out there and it has scarce resources i've got to get mine Nature doesn't operate that way. There is no scarcity in nature in the big picture uh, frame. Everything is abundant. It's all there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and it's cyclical. I mean, there may be seasons where there's a drought. Yeah, but the rains will. Yeah, you know, things will cycle through. Yeah, and it's this short-term thinking that lends itself to competing for scarcity. Uh, for, yeah. It's not scarce. If we if we operated out of a mindset of abundance, yeah. it's an abundant world. There's an abundant market. I start getting creative about and innovative about how I actually can manifest a larger market. How yeah. can I actually bring uh, uh, more into into view? Uh, because there is more to view if I'm actually becoming creative about it. Explain. What should we do? What do we recommend? Uh, do we need to change schools, business schools, whatever? Where Where is the best way? First of all, where are you going? Where is the best way to start? So, you know, honestly, uh, the best way to start is a change in consciousness. You know, I mean, all of the other things that you described, the schools, the uh, 
the mechanisms that you know the hows that we actually put together our worlds are all just a, a, a manifestation of an existing consciousness. I mean, mm-hmm. business schools, the whole educational system in the in the in, in the world today is organized around uh, developing little pieces of people that will fit into an economic machine mm-hmm. and will let that machine run. Yeah. And it's and and the part disposable. I mean, yeah. You know, when when you think about uh, how language actually reflects, you know, you know the, the the thinking paradigm, the consciousness. People are our greatest asset. Well, assets are meant to be used. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, make no mistake about it. Assets yeah. are used. Most people feel used in their environments. Our people are our uh, greatest resource. Again, resources get consumed assets get depreciated for the purpose of taxes i mean all of those sorts of things come into play and it's a consciousness thing mm-hmm. so if we don't change the consciousness and this is why i wrote the book compassionate capitalism mm-hmm. which yeah and you mentioned this uh it, it's almost an oxymoron how does compassion and capitalism work because most people don't experience that yeah the idea of compassion recognizes well first of all i can't be compassionate towards or about something unless i feel connected to it Mm -hmm. okay i have to feel connection in order to experience compassion and to behave compassionately so there's that that personal connection so when we start thinking in terms of consciousness awareness is one thing and just recognizing consciously you know that there's other stakeholders out there Compassion is the behavioral analog, the behavioral way that consciousness, conscious awareness that I can change begins to show up. So becoming a compassionate leader in a compassionate organization starts to bring into play a different consciousness about how business can be conducted. And make no mistake about it, um, those of you that are listening, business is probably the single greatest um creator of the problems that we have today, but it's also very likely to be the greatest single source of getting ourselves back on track. And again, yes. it's because you know, yes. business touches everything. How business is conducted makes a big difference. And that's a consciousness thing. Um, one part is a consciousness thing, for sure. If everybody were there, government and uh, companies and the employees or people or the customers, they could, they'd have buying power, they could control. Um, but the way I also have this is the, the, book, the book Super Capitalism um, explains the global system and uh, how it yeah makes everything bad because uh, money creates uh, corruption and the whole system is corrupt and will not out itself really heal. So do you believe there is a chance with consciousness that all companies, governments will change? Or is, is the hope uh, that new consciousness builds new companies, new system? That's a great question. Uh, Buckminster Fuller, uh, you know, the, the great futurist, um, this, you know, I'll paraphrase something he said. He said, in order to change an existing paradigm, you need to have a paradigm that is larger that can actually mm-hmm. play up the existing yeah. paradigm. So the existing, con- yeah, you know, we've got a lot of things in place that uh, are working. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. we've got um, supply chains. We've got, you know, we've got a number of infrastructure components that are in place. The question mm-hmm. is, in service of what? what are they in service of, and that's where this new paradigm can make things different. You know, the, the paradigm of compassionate capitalism. How do we use our existing infrastructure for good so that we become more effective at being uh, centers of distribution rather than centers of accumulation? And that, I think, is how we can begin to turn things around. Now, that's an abstraction. That's an abstract way of thinking about it. But there are businesses that are doing this today. There are businesses that are actually acting as centers of distribution with their IP. You know, they give a lot of stuff away. 
It's not that they're being altruistic and just saying, here, take it, it's all yours. No, they recognize that there's a quid pro quo, there will be something coming back, but it's a long-term investment in a future that is organized around thriving, not surviving. Yeah. And and that's a big difference. Yeah, but then I um, always mention, I uh, was really influenced by Mohamed Yunus. Um, <clears throat> yes. And, and learn from him uh, the, the idea of not, or a no profit is bad. Not for profit is the right thing to do. Purpose for before profit, but we want profit. We want to be profitable that we can more invest in doing good. So in, in to exactly. give, yeah, to give more, and and not just to. But that is the whole thing. What kind of politicians we normally have? There's what we how to get my position, my power, and they're fighting there and not really for the people. Um, so yeah. parties are fighting. So we have uh, in, in parliaments, I see it here in Europe, and I guess America's uh, is the same. They are fighting who has the power. So it's like the war game still there. And not exactly not like the ideal thought of <clears throat> the Olympic Games is no prof no professionals, amateurs, <laughs> and just yeah. eat about techniques who is best and and the development. Yeah. So yep. that yep. that is the dream. Mm -hmm. That is that is, there, there's an idealism there that I think is worth pursuing. I truly do. You know, part of the human condition is that we will tend to sort, you know, when we're looking at things, when we're considering things, we tend to sort for differences. So I see somebody walking across the street or I see somebody coming into the office and I start noticing how are they different from me? Mm -hmm. And that's for differences lends itself to yeah. an us them dynamic and, 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 it, and which is feeds into this. I need to have power. I need to have control because they are different. When we start, and that's a consciousness thing, when we start yeah. becoming aware that we're doing that, and the mm -hmm. consequences of doing that, um, you know, we can begin to do something different, which is to sort for similarities. How are we actually alike? Yes. How are we similar? And how can we leverage that similarity so yeah. that we can grow more effectively, so, so that collectively we can thrive? And it's not socialism. It's not you know, communism. It's, it's not any of isms. It's just a recognition that we are all connected. We and are all fear, connected. So, so call out also, also fear based again, um, because if we both, you know, on, on on this Zoom or meet, we can say, oh, what is the difference? He is uh, now an American and uh, I'm a German. So what is the difference? Uh, so I see the difference. Would we meet whatever deep in China? <laughs> we too, <laughs> with a long nose. Oh, <laughs> Someone like me, <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. here comes the awareness or the consciousness that we can really see where the differences must be. Also, something uh, what is uh, what is say the, the same right? because in the end we're all the same, as we know. Um, we're all the same. How do we get people really? You know, we always can say consciousness. What is your idea that? Um, the person who is listening now here, I will, how can we tell them, you do this and consciousness, what do you say, rises, grows or whatever? I think, first of all, we need to define what, what we're talking about with consciousness. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and before we started the, uh, the, the show, you and I had a little conversation about the difference between awareness and consciousness. Consciousness permeates everything. And it literally, I mean, if we look at it in a quantum physics perspective, it's the field. It's the electromagnetic field in which everything is, is present. Everything, everything is in this electromagnetic field and it's vibrate. And it's all frequency. It's all vibrational frequencies. And yeah. every possibility exists in this field. Awareness is noticing where I'm at in the field. Awareness is noticing what's blocking or um, enabling me to access that field. That's what awareness is. Awareness creates the possibility of more choices. And 
so when I become more aware, I start noticing where I am in the field. And I start recognizing that there are choices that I can make that will move me up or down, you know, up, you know, up or down, you know, it's relative, but it can move me to a different position in the field. And when I move to a different place in the field, I manifest different realities because there are things that exist on that frequency level that don't exist on another frequency level. And it's, it's very similar to tuning a dial on a radio. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. all frequencies are there. Music is playing on the you know, 98.1 on the FM band that is not playing on 89.4 on the FM band. It's different music, but it's always there. Yeah. So awareness is noticing where I'm at on the dial so that I can say, is this working or not working? And is this consistent with what I say I want to have in my life as an experience? I have control over that. I don't have control of the music that's playing out there because it's just there. But I have control about where I dial into that sort of thing. So is this a control? At, is, do you need for the control, not only the capacity, I can whatever change the frequency, uh -huh. but where do I get the idea that there is other music out there? That's where I start to be. You know, this is where meditation practices are useful. Um, the, the, we are so inundated with noise you yeah. know, you know, in our, our living of life. I and mean, we've got radio, we've got TV, we've got news, we've got politicians, we've got you know, marketers, we've got advertising. I mean, all of this noise is coming in. And because of the noise, we can't really hear that inner voice. So. One of the things that I work with my clients on is giving them a practice of stillness. Now, you can call it meditation. You can call it centering. You can call it you know whatever you want. But it's crucial, particularly for leaders. Uh, and by definition, everybody's a leader. I'll just kind of you know, make that point real quickly here because everybody is a leader in their life. We have to be able to quiet our minds long enough to hear that voice that wants to express itself through me. I'm a vehicle. Yeah. I'm a vehicle is used. Yeah, spirit moves to and through me. The field moves to and through me. And it gets to use me to, to create. Mm -hmm. And most people find themselves kind of tapped because they don't listen to that voice. The voice is always there. You know, that that messaging system is always. Yeah. in activation i'm wondering so if you're coming it allows me to move this, up and down we have this come we on the planet earth with this and uh, um and just the adults say stop meditating stop dreaming stop being connected stop seeing things we don't see um because i'm still struggling a little bit we both were in situations within the companies i with my own companies as lawyer and everything and then realized Something makes no sense. Um, mm -hmm. But when you share what companies today do, what kind of consequences, that's a plastic where, where this ends, little nanoplastic pieces. You were not thinking as a marketing guy with that. I was not thinking when I, as a lawyer, was, I need to win this, <laughs> this lawsuit or whatever. What consequences on the side of what, what I do there for the world? But then we start somehow to see me and start thinking. But we have not the school. Everything is short. It's not only short money. It's also, I only need to look here. We, we know where we would play chess. Only think about the next <laughs> move you do is not enough. You need to think a few more. Yeah. So, and this thinking more could we just simply train it that we every in school everybody learns it or what kind of consciousness um, or meditation technique says if I do this then it opens up and you, then you suddenly see more you don't need to think it through. Mm -hmm. A specific meditation technique uh, that I use uh, and I've been meditating since the uh, late 1960s. Um, this is when I first started meditating. But one of the techniques that I use is um, just quieting myself to the point where I get to the experience of being nowhere in no time 
and being nobody. Mm -hmm. So there's nobody, no place, there's no time, mm -hmm. there's no sense. Of, uh, I'm I'm just I'm just a, I'm just aware. Yeah. But I don't have a body to be aware of. I don't have a timeline to be aware of. I don't have a space that I feel myself in. That place of complete neutrality. Yes. Uh, and it takes practice to get yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so a non-duality. Yeah. Non-duality yeah. state, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, at that point, there's, I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm mm -hmm. part of something much bigger. Mm -hmm. But uh, the awareness, it's, I, I don't have the awareness of Blaine. I just am there. Yeah. There, there's something about going to that place that opens up access to that radio dial mm -hmm. and then when i kind of come back and i and i can go to that place with an idea with with a thought with with something that i'm you know wanting to you know, consider but i go there without attachment when i come back almost every time i've got an answer that i can begin to do something with mm -hmm. That is different than anything that I thought of while I was yeah, kind of sitting at my desk going, God, I don't know how to do this. I know. And, and it doesn't have to be a long time. It can be five minutes. I, uh, sometimes I'll just do it you know, when I'm taking my morning shower. I'll just kind of let the, the water you know, rain down on me and just kind of go nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Go no place. I, you know, just, yeah. Uh, you, you, letting good letting you, you sentence. Say uh, you're not the aware, you don't have the awareness about blame. Um, and just yes. two days ago, you were in, in, in Kenya and in Africa. Um, and uh, I know you're also there um, on the board of uh, Unstoppable Foundation. You support a lot of uh, building schools and uh, villages uh, over there in Kenya with the Maasai land and the Maasai land. Um, and the Maasai. If I understood right, they don't have this I word. It's just a we culture. And coming it's a back, we culture. Yeah. The the blame consciousness. I was surprised uh, there also that they give you the name when you're, let's say, 15. Because how can you give someone a name if you don't know who, who you, they are? Who they are. Yeah. yeah. So we get a name, yeah. name, Wolfgang or whatever. And now you need to fit in. They form us. And don't watch it. So um, also from consciousness. So what is, and then I felt in this lesson also, they're not allowed to kill uh, lions anymore when the boys are 13, go out. Of the, so they are not warriors in the old sense anymore. Is it right they call them warriors of wisdom or whatever something, education? Warriors of wisdom. Warriors yeah. of wisdom. Wow. Um, where does all this consciousness come from? I think it's just a willingness to, and, 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 yeah, and you and I both have spent time with these uh, tribes people, um, and there's a willingness to actually recognize, and I'll put it in my language here, but, you know, yeah, is what we're doing working or not working, as opposed to is this right or wrong, is this good or bad? and. Mm -hmm. Very interestingly, you know, just because of the connection that the Maasai, particularly the Maasai, have with nature, um, they naturally would move towards, is this working or not working, as, as a guiding ethos, mm -hmm. guiding mm -hmm. my actions. So, yeah, killing lions as part of the rite of passage for the male warriors yeah, in today's world, no longer working you know, for a whole lot of different reasons. Yeah, and because they recognize that you know, thriving is the intent of nature. Mm -hmm. As a warrior, part of my part of my role as a warrior in uh, is to ensure the thriving of my community. That's that's the charter for a warrior to embrace. The rituals that are involved with you know, stepping into that role, but the rituals are just rituals. You know, they, they're they're intended to uh, inform an idea, and yeah, it, it's interesting when we think of relationship. We have relationship with ideas, yeah, and 
people get attached to the form of the idea. And that attachment to form uh, goes into then determining, is this right? Is this wrong? Is this good? Is this bad? You know, as courses of action and things that we do, as opposed to, is this still working? Or is it not working any longer? And being willing to allow the form of the relationship to change, I think is really crucial. As long as we adhere, I'll take it back to capitalism. If as long as we adhere to the way that capitalism is you know, developed, it's about accumulation, it's about you know, market share capture, it's about, yeah, the form of our relationship with capitalism needs to change. Yeah. The form needs to change. The intent of capitalism, if we go back to Adam Smith, was always about thriving. You know, the, the whole notion of you know, Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations was reci reciprocity. Yeah, in, in trading partners, you mm -hmm. win, I win. It's, yeah. it's a, it's, the, there's a win, 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 win dynamic. Yeah, yeah, but that is true. difficult for most people to understand. I experience a lot of people think, oh, we make a win-win and then they share the profit. That is not really win-win. Yeah, it's no. really more on the conscious level and, and what we're really striving for, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we get back to that. The form, we, we look at, does the form need to change? Yeah. And my vote is yes, it does. The intent is where we go back to. What was the intent? The intent is thriving. Yeah. And there we need to give more wisdom and information to bring in form. Information, the right, yeah. The right thing. Um, we just had the warriors of wisdom and Maasai, you know, we come back to capitalism. So what? what is um, the right way to say then? Blaine is a warrior for compassionate capitalism or what about to say he is the angel of compassionate capitalism of not having the warrior and the officers again <laughs> well i mean if we take warrior in the truest sense of the word a champion because that's essentially what a warrior is it's a champion for an ideal and yeah. I, I would look at myself as being that i'm a champion for the ideal of compassionate capitalism yeah, yeah. So then see the, the, the question today also, now we're talking more of the com, uh, compassionate part, but is capitalism really the best form or can we develop something better? Uh, who was it that said democracy um, is the, one of the messiest form of governments that we could ever envision, but it's also probably the best that we could ever come up with. Yeah, I think capitalism is kind of the same way. Uh, if we take the isms out of it, whether it's communism, socialism, yeah. uh, capitalism, you just take the isms out of them and don't, because you know, when we start labeling things, we start creating boxes. So the question I would have you know, our listeners you know, consider is when you, when you are you know, in business, when you're a consumer of business, don't worry about whether it's capitalistic or not. Is it? Enhancing your likelihood of thriving yeah. is the way that the business is conducting its business likely to enhance thriving for the planet. Yeah. And then you make choices. And, and you know, capitalism for me is, is predicated on free choice. I mean, you look again back to nature. Nature is the only truly free market system. There are no artificial constraints in nature. Everything just kind of, you know, it dies it gets reborn. It gives things away. It takes things. It's but it's uninhibited. It's unencumbered. Yeah. That's the model that I would envision for capitalism. Now there yeah. are, yeah, yeah. yeah that, I mean, that, to me, that works. Do you agree? Then um, I asked Rupert Cheldrake, who say the the professor about morphogenetic field yeah. and so on. Uh, yeah, what more, yeah, about uh, yeah. Artificial intelligence is this bad or is it good? And I just got a very short answer. Depends on the intention. <laughs> That's exactly. simple. Depends yeah. on the... So can we say <laughs> capitalism is just a, a way of this? Some people Depends say it's just be 
correct accountable. So if you give money, you pay it back. Or it's just about accountability. Um, and giving loans to people that they consume something, get addicted and, and lose the sense of reality uh, and misuse, mm -hmm. that is for sure a loan and all the credits is bad. But uh, if I come up with an idea, maybe for the first time, whatever we can um, um, get uh, the salt water to 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 drink water and we need a machine for it but i don't have the money uh, to it was all like the micro credits you know uh, used if the credits are really used like you said to help people to thrive and, and create good results then mm -hmm. wow what a great invention yeah, absolutely. And and I don't need a huge return on that investment. It doesn't have to be serious. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it can be modest. Um, I mean, again, I go back to nature. There is nothing in nature that looks for a 20% return on, <laughs> on its investment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a recognition that there will be that, the, yeah. When I drop fruit from my tree, um, it will get consumed, but part of it gets deposited back in the earth. And it's, you know, so that's the, that's the interest mm -hmm. <laughs> and it gets you know, back into the nutrients, uh, structure so that the tree can grow again. So there's a cycle that just kind of, you know, plays itself out. Then I come and we come, we come um, now also uh, to the end of, uh, this episode here, <clears throat> um, something was always uh, triggering me. And then the book, the best is yet to come. I quoted Robert Kennedy about the gross domestic product. Uh, it's measuring every shit, everything what is bad, um, and, but not what makes life worse living. And, yes. and in Europe, um, I don't know. I know you have in your book, Compassionate Capitalism, crazy examples with the investors and the prison. So now they get guaranteed that they have a good interest rate. Uh, uh, for prison, so we need we need some people in the prison. It's Gotta so keep the prison full in order to pay for it. It's an investment here. We, um, we in Europe with the gross domestic product mm, decided now that also criminal stuff or whatever they do, it's criminal work counts now now for uh, the gross domestic product GDP. Yes, yeah, GDP. Yes, mm. and uh, the European Union made a law that it is, and then the official rate of being in depth because it's measured to the uh, GDP dropped. So if we would say mafia, or let's say, could we ask Al Capone to come back and create more mess that the gross domestic product goes up uh, and we are fine and they can borrow more money or go country can go more in depth. They can sue more. And yeah. So, we we know somehow this is shit. Like about to, if we let's do this measuring the worth thing and says, wow, this is how you measure the country's wealth or development or thriving. What is your idea to create uh, a new quality of GPD? As we said, this is what we should measure. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, I'm on the board of uh, the World Business Academy, and the World Business Academy was the catalyst. Um, it actually came up with the idea for a movement that's called Just Capital. Mm -hmm. yeah, the just, and just Capital is a, basically a measuring uh, yeah. uh, movement here. What what are we measuring? Are we met? Yeah, and so and the intent was to replace the traditional Fortune 500 list. Uh, the Forbes, you know, richest person in you know, the world list by adding different metrics. Yeah. You know, the kind like human uh, development index. Now also. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Bring us, you know, so corporations and, and right now it is corporations are being measured on a, a whole spectrum of, of social, environmental, well-being, mm -hmm. uh, political, uh, social, you know, social responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, metrics, mm -hmm. not just return on investment, not just profitability, not just market cap. Yeah, those become incidental to mm -hmm. these other metrics. And 
Just Capital is getting quite a bit of traction right now. A lot of companies are starting to pay attention to where they rank in the Just Capital 100. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's an old aphorism, but what gets measured gets paid attention yes. to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we yeah. change the metrics. Yeah. We change the metrics in service of yes. something that is organized around thriving health and well-being, societal, uh, uh, being a generative society, uh, those sorts of things. Yeah, we can see even Europe, uh, there's just a K education thing about uh, kids in schools. And um, we have a um, kind of study comparing different countries. And Finland is normally always top. So why is Finland right top? The top? Why? There's not so much different in mathematics. So why are they at top? They have a totally different value system about teachers, about yes. school. Yeah. And and this is okay. Uh, we pick then, like you do with the just capital, pick some points and says we need to measure this uh, or change the value of this. So we have from yeah. what you said. Oh, we need to be careful. Even everybody knows giving makes you happy. <laughs> yeah. So that's the beautiful part. Yeah. Um, so we all know it. But if we do it on a total good level, organize a country, a country was organized like this, that the companies can do this, and people listen, that is wonderful. And then criteria for mission. So this was uh, consciousness now, especially also for the companies. Um, what do you, you share? And that you've always the people in. Um, I want to ask you now two things first maybe kind of a wonderful closing for this. And the next one is uh, give me the promise that we make another session and talking just about leadership. <laughs> you have that promise. I love talking about leadership. <laughs> I think we can get pretty granular with that. That would be great. Um, so I mean, just along, along that line, um, the question of how do we do this? You know, how do we you move into compassionate capitalism? That is a question for leaders. And that I'm, and I don't mean titled leaders. I don't mean the CEOs. I don't. I mean you and me, you know, the listener. Leaders cause movement. That's what leaders do. They cause movement. Mm -hmm. Very simple definition. Everybody is always causing movement. So we need to be conscious about and aware of what kind of movement are we causing. Yeah. So my, you know, my, I guess my. Um, I don't want to use the word advice here, but my prescription, uh, my suggestion would be for each of us you know, to pay attention to the movement that we're generating in our life. We take actions. Those actions cause things to happen. Yes. We have control over that. And uh, we get to make uh, choices. Uh, and people will respond to the choices that we make. So rather than just being an unconscious consumer, be a conscious consumer. Yeah, super, super great, yeah. Blaine. Um, I love it. Um, now this um, inspirational hour is about sharing, bringing wisdom and information, and and you delivered both. And we all feel uh, how much wisdom is behind uh, experiences, not just I read something and share it. Um, super, thank you. Um, before we come to another session about leadership. Um, where can people reach you? Uh, what is the best? We will have a link for sure here. Um, you are the avatar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the best place to reach me right now is going to be uh, LinkedIn. Um, yeah, is a great uh, platform. Uh, my website, BlaineBartlett.com. Mm -hmm. I've got all kinds of resources up there. You can, you can start poking around on that site and get just about any yeah, information about programs I do, books that I've written, that sort of thing. Uh, but LinkedIn and my website, BlaineBartlett.com, two of the best ones. Super. Thank you very much, Blaine, for my your pleasure. Okay. Insights. And we just uh, somehow on the surface, but I think we get an idea of what we all can do um, to create uh, the living well, more paradisal, <laughs> like I said, I don't know if this the right English word, but, but I believe a kind of paradise on earth is possible. At least I believe the best is to come and we will make it 
happen all together. Thank you for listening and hope you took some notes and start implementing something in your life. See you next time or hear you next in the show on the UK Health Radio. Thank you, Blaine. This was another episode of Winspiration Wisdom and Information to support you getting out of illusions, false identifications, limiting beliefs. We all have the power and potential to be more, do more, have more, give more. Reality is what is possible in the universe and the best is yet to come. If you want to dive deeper into possibilities of creating the extraordinary future, go to inspiration.global or to wolfgangsonnenburg.com. More information and some free downloads like the email program Dream Goals Reality or a copy of the book The Best is Yet to Come can be found on the UK Health Radio website under the Listen on Demand and Presenters section. Join us again next week on the Winspiration Show for more wisdom and information to create your extraordinary future. <music>